the the H. Whoopsie. Okay. F F F F F B E H. That was from the color copy. So we apply that. And that's good. Then we do the feature layout background. These are all again from the from the color cop B A E nine D F. Right. Once you set it and forget it, you don't have to do this whole step again. Let's do that and let's do that. Okay, so these are our colors from the website. Everyone good? Okay, the next section we're gonna work on is fonts right down here. So we did the design background and border, it's very easy. Now we're on to fonts. Again, we figured out the fonts from looking on the HTML with Arial. Okay, we're gonna lower that down a little bit here, make it 16. You have to make all these Arial body links. I don't want them to be blue. I'd like them to be red. Um, Arial. So every time you start a new email, it'll pull all these up for you. Feature text, feature link. I don't want blue. I want red. Article heading, Arial. Just a side note, Constant Contact has a limited amount of text that they're suggesting in the very beginning. And the reason why they do that is because they want to make sure it appears on the user's computer. You can select some of these other ones, but there's a chance that the user may not have that font selected, so it may not show up. So we tend to just stick to our clients to, to stick with Arial or Tahoma. Those are two very basic ones. Okay, and that's, that's the font. That's the font design. We have all the links. We have the article headings, everything we're gonna pull up should be set with those colors. Okay, the last section in design is buttons. That's very important. So let's just go back quickly and look at the website. See these nice call to action buttons here. Nice bright red pop color. So no, we don't want black. We want that nice red color. Arial text, 16. Let's see, was that bolded, this one? No, they're not bolded. So we don't want to make it bolded. We want to match whatever the website is. And this is very important to this radius section here. Again, we're in design under the last section under button. So let's look again at the website. See, they're rounded. They're not square. So what we want to do, see how these are square in this generic newsletter? We're going to increase the radius. Until we have a beautiful call to action button that looks very similar to the website. Sarah, can you unmute yourself? Oh, then Thank mute you. it? Oh, yes, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, that's the template, that's the design, that's the features, that's the font. Now, this is the fun part. Okay, so we're going to go now between build and images. This is the fun part. So the first thing we want to do is put a logo at the top of your email. It's very important. We suggested you want to have people know immediately who this is coming from. So again, I had gone on the website, just done a right click. You probably all have your logo anyway. You just drag it and you just drop it. Just drag it and drop it over there. I'm going to take out this logo. You just click on it and it gives you all the options of what to do. I'm going to delete that. Oh, that's way too small. I'm going to increase it. Yeah, it doesn't look so good. Let's see if there's another logo. Yeah, that's one's too fuzzy. Let's try this one. I'm going to drag it and drop it. Much better. This one I don't like. I'm deleting it. Oh, this one has a white background. I don't like that so much. I'm going to see if I can change the background so it mimics that a lot better. I'm going to hover over here, hit the second button here, and it gives you the option of changing the background right here. I'm going to hit the paint cup and change it so it looks nicer to white. I think that looks much better. I'm going to increase it so it looks nice. And I want to put an image under there that looks nice and makes people think of cakes and my business. I'm going to put an image right under it. Um, if you want to 
think about spacing. You have to click, click on the image and it gives you horizontal and vertical spacing. This looks pretty good to me, so I'm not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna drag it and increase the size. Wow, that looks nice. Oh, but now I want a little bit more space on either side. So I am going to delete the spacing on either side, which allows me to drag it full screen. Okay, so now we have a nice logo, a nice header image. The two things you don't ever want to forget, you want to link the logo and your header image to your website. Be a missed opportunity if somebody decided to click on it and it led to a dead end. So make sure you click on this, you hit the link, you put the website, and you put your website in there. Very important for those two things. We, we recommend to our clients to link most of your images and most of your call to action, obviously. Okay, so moving on. I tend to make a nice sort of tagline here for what your business would be. Some of you may have not a mission statement, but let's see, smart, classic. Let's see what her website had. Simple, classic, and delicious. Smart would have been fine too. You can just text whatever you want in there. Simple. Classic, delicious. Okay, so I like the way that looks, but it's way too small. So I just highlight it and I increase it to whatever looks good to you. I like it like that looks good to me. I'm gonna change the font color because I want it to pop a little bit. Let's make it that nice green right there. Okay, I can make it even a little bit bigger. Just increase it till I like the way that looks. And I don't like that divider here, so I'm going to move that divider down. I think there's too much space here, so I'm going to click on that space bar, and I'm going to decrease that space. They make you keep it at 10. It's the lowest. Okay, so now we get into the rest of the fun stuff. We've got the logo, we've got the header image, we've got the tagline, we've got a nice divider. And now we are going to work on building the rest of the layout of the template. Okay, so that's gonna be here in build. Again, we finished with design, so unless you wanna change something with the colors or the font, we're pretty much done with that. Build here. So we are going to add a section header, we have a section header. We're just gonna drag it right there, it's nice. And we're gonna call this whatever you wanna call it. Now, new labor shipping thing nationwide, okay? And we can write some text. We can write, we are now shipping our tropical cakes. And they are delicious. Anything you want to say. Okay. With buttercream frosting. Okay. Okay, so you can say whatever you want, a little, your first information. I think there needs to be another space under here. So I'm gonna go up and get the spacer and just drag it over there, put a little space under there to give the eyes some reading room. I think that looks good. And I want an image to go with that now. So I'm gonna go to my library and grab the pineapple cake I want. I'm going to drag it over there. I'm going to delete this. And we have a nice section here, but it's, it's um, and you, this is where you can just do anything you want. No information here. You're going to, you're going to change this button. You're going to change the button. Again, always be linked, but I don't like what that says. So I'm going to change it to say, Shop all. 
I'm going to change it to say shop all, you are always going to include the link right here. Very, very important. And, and that's, that's your first header, your first article. I think that's a little too much of the spacer, so I'm just going to click on it and reduce the spacer right there. And and that's 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 your first section right there. So good job on your first section. Now I want a second section. So I'm going to hover over this section. You don't have to redo any work. You can just simply hover there, click that, and I'm going to copy this whole block. Okay, and I'm going to do this right up here too. I'm going to copy that whole header. Okay, now I'm going to bring this header down. And I need some more space, you can tell, in the middle there. So let's build. We're going to go get a space bar, and we're going to put the space bar in there. Does that look good? Yeah, that looks good. I want this picture to be a little bit bigger now. That looks nicer. And move this down a little bit. We need some more text around that. Out. Good for now. Okay, so we have another. We have another information you want to add. Note from Susie, the owner. Um, she wants to tell people about new recipes, new information. That's what she wants to tell people about. Whatever you want to write there. Some note from her. We're shipping now. I want the picture now on the other side. I don't like two pictures here together. So I'm going to take this picture and I'm going to move it to the other side. Okay. There we go. I don't want that picture. I want a new picture. So I'm going to go to my images and take a picture from Susie. She was telling us the note from Susie. I want it to be from the owner. I'm going to delete this picture and we need a space here you can tell there's too close doesn't look good to me i'm going to go get a space bring it there and reduce that a little bit so it matches the top one you can look at the top one to see that was 20. this is 20. we're going to write something about that she wants to say here and then change, remember, link, 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 your call to action here. And these are two nice sections. We recommend to our clients to keep it simple. People don't want a wall of text. People don't want to be too much information. They like videos. They like GIFs. I'll show you that in a minute, how to do that. Let's just finish up the, the details, the housekeeping of this email. And then I'll show you some other fun stuff you can do. We're going to delete that. And I just want to point out, there's so many different layouts you can use here. Pictures, section, articles with borders. It's really very fun. And we encourage you to go in and change stuff. But once you set your template, it's nice to just have your standard template. Don't change it too much. But you don't want to bore people when you have your customers seeing your emails every month. It's nice to change it up a little bit. Um, so those are two standard sections. Very important. What you always should have here is your social media. You can see that here it comes with the newsletter. It's very easy to have that. I'm just going to copy this. I hovered over it and copied it. I'm going to delete that. Um, and that's too much space. I'm going to delete that space. Right here at the bottom, we recommend putting your address, phone number, website, just so people, they know to go to the bottom of the email and they know that's how they can connect with you. Um, again, you'll play with the spacing, you'll play with the dividers. There's lots of different things you can play around with and, and just, just have fun with. There's coupons here, there's three colors. Um, the last item that's very important that we recommend too is the navigation bar. Um, again, that's part of your website, which will remind people to go to your website. And this is a good place at the end of the email send them over there to buy whatever it is you want to be selling them. So you just simply click on that. Cookies, again, very important. Link, link, link. So you want to, again, click on that, put your web page in there. Again, you can see, you can link an email, you can link a document, you can put a landing page. There's lots of different things you can do, but it's just very important to keep that there. Okay. 
and you see the rest of your emails. You just click on it, it pops up all of your things. It's very, very user friendly. Cupcakes, say I want cakes, and say that's all I want. I just want three. Well, how would I get rid of these other two? You click on them and you hit delete. Very simple. Click on this, hit delete. Okay, and that looks really good there. A couple of fun things. Gifts and videos. When we do emails for our clients and we send them, we have a very detailed report that goes out afterwards. Literally 80% of these people click on videos are very, very good to drive traffic. They're interesting. So I wanted to show you a GIF. Actually, I didn't have a video, but if you have yourself speaking about something, positioning yourself as an expert in the field, if you have a YouTube video, something that's quick or short is fun to put in. If not, I had this fun GIF. I could, you put, can put a fun GIF in like this, but it's, it's too much space in front of it. And again, how do you make it bigger? You just increase it like that. It just shows a little, little eye-catching interest, something fun. It's a little crazy, but that's fun. Um, okay, the nav bar, the company social media links. Okay, we've got the footer. Now let's do the subject and the pre-header. Very easy. I don't know why we're getting that. You just click on, you just click on the subject and pre-header and it pops up. Very, very easy. And we want to say new labor shipping. That's the subject. The pre-header, we always recommend to include some email. You see it in your inbox, some, I think in Gmail, you can see it all. So we recommend always including them. A delicious treat. And you'll put your name here. And we recommend putting a name that people will recognize. They know you as their plumber, electrician, put your name. And it helps to put an email address that's tied to your business. Why it's not being saved. Fine. Okay, so this is the basics of setting up the email. Um, on the top right corner, you then would hit preview and test. You can send a test to yourself. You can send a test elsewhere. Uh, we recommend looking it on mobile devices, see what it looks like, but Constant Contact is very mobile friendly. They have well tested on many devices and it's great. And then we, you would load your contacts and you would send the email out. Their reporting is wonderful. You can tell who's opened it, who hasn't opened it. Um, they always have cool features. I'm just going to show you one really cool thing that they just launched. It's under tools, and it's called AI. And say you set the template up, and it all looks great. Well, now what do I send next month? I don't know what to do next month. Well, let AI tell you what to do. And you just click on AI. and generate content with AI. You want to write three to four sentences on why you should stop by our bakery this fall season. Okay? You don't want to, you don't want to write that. Let's see what they say. We invite you to come and visit the bakery this fall season. Our wide selection of freshly baked breads and warm beverages will be sure to satisfy your cravings and provide you with a cozy and comforting experience. Thank you. Perfect. I just need a picture of a fall cake and we're good to go for your email for that month. You just simply highlight it, right click, copy it, go back to your email. You're going to copy it for the next month and put that nice header in. Get a nice picture, nice promotion, coupon, and you're good to go. Um, okay, so that's the reusable template. When you want to send your next email, make sure you take make a copy of it. Don't ever do it over that again. And just like baking a cake, email marketing might seem daunting, but with the right recipe and dash creativity, you'll be serving up inbox treats that will leave everybody wanting more. They have a very user-friendly interface, and we encourage you to experiment. They are always making updates, making it easier. Um, and as David said, I'm happy to answer any questions or if you have anything for David or me, just let me know. 
You're muted, David. There you go. Sarah, that was outstanding. Can you just toggle back and forth between the website and the email to show how the two look so alike? And the reason that we designed these templates to match the website is to make sure that there's branding consistency so people can recognize right away that this is coming from Susie's email, for, from Susie's, uh, um, Susie's, Susie's cake, for example. It just appears more professional, more sharp looking. Uh, so it that's why we spend a lot of time to make sure that these things look so great. So if you were to compare the website with the what Sarah did, you'll see how uh, the two look alike. Uh, so there's the email, right, with the colors and the pictures. And if you click on that. And here's the website, all very similar branding. Terrific. Um, someone is asking if you can go into the constant contact and show the preview, what would it look like? Okay, so yeah. If you go to preview. Move my zoom down, okay. You just hit preview, preview, and you can enter your email address right there, send it, and it shows up in your inbox like it's, a, like it's an email. Perfect, very good. So uh, can you show the mobile version as well uh, in the preview? Yeah, so that's the desktop version and the mobile version obviously is stacked, but that's what it will look like. And it's important to do this too, because you wanna make sure there's no extra spacing and you wanna make sure sometimes if there's, they do offer two images side by side, which is fine, but sometimes I don't like using that because it looks funny in the mobile version. So it's important just to do this. They're all, they all look great, but it's important to always preview. Perfect, very good. Um, there's some other questions that are coming in. Uh, Sarah, can you stop sharing for just a moment? Yep. Great, thank you. Okay, so we are going to uh, take questions now because there are a lot of people here, we ask you to please write a question in the chat and we'll answer them you know, a, as they come in. Um, one of the question is, um, I'm a little lost. Uh, do we find these options through Constant Contact? Yes, Brandy, these are all things in the Constant Contact account. Um, they're part of the regular account and they're available to you uh, to be used. Um, Long is saying, really considering this, thank you. Um, make sure to use the link that is in the chat because that will give you the 20% off for life. Yep, glad you're considering that. Can the constant contact branding at the bottom of the email be removed? Yes, absolutely, that can be removed. The cost, um, the cost is based on the number of uh, email addresses in your account. Um, it starts at a about $20 a month, I believe. And then it goes up from there in uh, the first 500 email addresses are about $20. Then from there, it's, I believe, $45 and roughly $20 every a couple of thousand email addresses. Uh, on the uh, Constant Contact account, there's a page that shows the pricing so you know what, what uh, the, the cost is. Um, in the world of marketing, I am surprised by the affordability of the Constant Contact system, considering what they're giving you in terms of features and flexibility um, to get an email out as often as you want. Remember, if you don't reach out to your email list, they will forget about you. So the, the ROI on email marketing is just outstanding. And uh, for those who uh, prefer uh, not to get involved with it, you, either because you don't have the time, the desire, or the skill, um, we offer a full service email marketing program um, that where we do all of this for you. Uh, Sarah just gave you a very quick overview of how we create a template. There's a lot more work that goes into it actually uh, behind the scenes, but we also write the emails for you. We, we created, it's a hands-off approach and once client starts working with us, uh, they tend to stay with us for years. So it's a really great, great approach. Um, you can consider that um, our program is roughly between 180 and $220 a month uh, to get all this done for you. That's uh, one of the questions. 
Uh, Michelle is asking, uh, what tools are available for growing your email list? Is there a way to use house or lead magnets? So I'll answer the first question. The second one, um, yes. So within Constant Contact, you have several tools to uh, grow your email list. Uh, anything such as the QR code that you see on the right there can be used uh, to, for people to, to sign up. Uh, they have pop-up forms for your website. They have landing pages. They have forms. Uh, they have links that you can use on social media. A whole bunch of different tools with the goal of growing your email list. Um, and Stephanie answered, how do you upload the list? That's right. Uh, you can just upload a spreadsheet. Uh, that's right. And um, do you help build an email list if you um, if you don't have any potential leads? Yes, I mean, part of your marketing plan should be the ongoing growth of your email list. And an email list can be grown different ways. It's people who you meet, whether it's an in-person networking event or when you meet new customers, prospects, vendors, friends, families, and so on, you know, the this, Traditional business card still works. Uh, if you're having an event, you can have people sign up either online or if it's an in-person event, make sure there's a sign-up sheet. Uh, if you have a retail location, you can have a raffle on, on the counter, you know, enter your email address to win a $30 gift card to, to the store. If uh, So there are all different ways of collecting email addresses. And because your email list is a true asset of your business, it's really important that you grow that list also because over time that email list will degrade because people change their email address. So roughly about 20% of the US population changes their email address every year. So it's important that you kind of replenish those email addresses. It should be an ongoing thing that you do on a regular basis because that email list is a true asset of your business that allows you to reach out and touch these people on a regular basis. Um, is Activate supposed to be used in conjunction with this? I'm not familiar what, with what uh, Activate is uh, long. So if you want to add some more information, uh, perhaps I can, we can help. Um, uh, Tiffany asks, if I have an existing account with Constant Contact, can I still receive the discount? Uh, I wish I could say yes, but no. This is for Constant Contact to, to get uh, new customers. Um, and then... Um, is this support via chat or phone for when you're trying to build your template? Yes, that's one of the reasons that we work so closely with Constant Contact is their support is just outstanding. Um, we've been with them for nearly 13 years. And I can tell you from experience that there's no other email service provider out there that has the support that uh, Constant Contact does. Uh, you may have heard of other companies tied to types of uh, animals, the, perhaps monkeys or so on. Uh, and their free version does not have any support uh, after 30 days. So that's something to, to consider. Um, does the program control subscribe, unsubscribe? Smart question, Joseph. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, this is a federal regulation that requires that any commercial email has the option to unsubscribe. And yes, of course, Constant Contact has that option. Uh, so that uh, if someone uh, does not want to get your email anymore, they can. It's a one-click unsubscribe, and they will no longer uh, receive that email from you. By the way, the unsubscribe rate is an important uh, figure to look at after you send each email because it gives you an indication of whether people are interested in your emails and whether there's value behind them. If your unsubscribe rate is below 1%, you're fine. That's typical. You'll always get some unsubscribe rate. But once it starts going a little bit north of 1%, it's the market telling you that um, you are, they're not seeing value in your email or you're sending too frequently. So certainly look at your open rate and your click rate. But the uh, unsubscribe rate is really an indication that the marketing is is not working and you need to change something, whether it's the frequency or the, the content of the email. Um, Long says, just starting out with my website, what plan do you recommend to start with? Uh, well, the, the basic plan with Constant Contact works perfectly fine. On the social side, I mean, the firearms industry, which hinders a lot of the advantages offered through Constant Contact. 
Um, I wish I could have a, a specific answer for you. I'm unsure of that. I'm not familiar of uh, with regulations tied to certain industries such as firearms. Uh, for that, I would encourage you to reach out directly to Constant Contact and they can let you know uh, if there are any concerns uh, with what uh, you would be offering uh, as a service or product. Um, what other questions can we ask for? answer for you? What are some of your concerns about email marketing? Uh, Marty asks, I noticed the template you were working with had an FAQ section. What do you think of an Ask the Expert section in the newsletter? Love it. Smart. Creative. Very nice. That's part of the value that you're giving to people. So say, for example, you are an appliance repair company or an appliance company or an appliance retailer. You don't want your emails just to say, come into our store or come to our website, buy our refrigerators, buy our stoves, and so on. You want to put information in the email about how to maintain these things. How do I get a smell out of my dishwasher? How do I maximize the lifespan of my, di of my washing machine? Things like that. That's where people will see the value and makes you look like an expert. Okay? Um, so it's... It's those type of things that really set you apart from the others. Susan asks, if I send to a patient list, do I need to get their permission first or does the unsubscribe cover that? So in email marketing, there's something called an implied consent. And that is that if a patient, a customer, a prospect, someone gives you their email address, a, a business card, they fill out a form, their patient that's coming to your office and so on, together with their phone number and their um, street address, there's an implied consent that you can reach out to them. Now, in the world of email, you can do it once. And if they don't want to receive it anymore, they simply unsubscribe and that's the end of it. But generally, you don't need a formal approval for people to say, okay, you can email me. Think of a form online. You put it either, you know, on your website, you put a form, subscribe to our newsletter to get the latest news or discounts or so on. The person is putting their e actively putting their email address in there, so you can email them, certainly. Um, excerpts from blog posts. Yeah, blog posts. Yeah, Stephanie's spot on. Exactly. Uh, blog posts help, especially if it's if your own blog post. So it's a way of repurposing it. So say you write an article about your service or product of your business. You post it on the blog of your website. Great but you can repurpose it by putting the article in your email. Um, and one cool thing that Constant Contact offers is that you can, each email has its own URL, a web address, and you can post that web address on social media. So you can post on social media saying, here's our latest newsletter that talks about X, Y, and Z. You put the link and the newsletter appears there. And if people click on the link, they see the newsletter. So it's a way of giving the newsletter more legs and is seen by people whose email address you may not even have. So that's a very smart approach to do. Tony asks, can you use this for, uh, can you use this for newsletters instead of emails? I'm a coach and they want to start a monthly information newsletter to compile an email list. <laughs> we're, ca we're calling it email newsletter, but they're all emails, uh, different formats. Uh, we just use the word newsletters to differentiate it from the word email because it's a little too generic. And yes, Stephanie answered that already. Perfect. Very good. Uh, more people will be getting your email, certainly. Um, so Goy says, when our business creates a video or post, we can use Constant Contact to post them on all the social media platforms all in one place. Uh, yes, um, Constant Contact does have the option of posting emails that you create in Constant Contact onto social media. Typically, we prefer a manual posting though, um, because it's done, uh, it's clean and you really see exactly what it's gonna look like. So that's a little bit of a gray area, yeah. Um, does the URL or share link include the unsubscribe link? So the URL that you would use on social media, Marty, just shows the newsletter. 
the unsubscribe link is at the bottom of the actual newsletter. So it would not be in the URL. Um, thank you, Stephanie. She just posted the link to our contact page and our website uh, so that uh, if tomorrow you think of a question and you want to reach out to us, you can certainly uh, do that and uh, happy to answer your questions. Um, one of the questions that we uh, are often asked is, um, what really determines the open rate of my email? And the, the open rate is one of the major measures um, of a, uh, an email program. So the, the two things are the from field. So who is this email coming from? And uh, it needs to be a name that's recognizable. So for example, in our case, my name is David Fisher. The company is Solutions for Growth. Some people just know my name. Some people know the company. From the from field, we put David Fisher dash Solutions for Growth. So there's a 50-50 chance that it's recognized. The second thing that determines the open rate is the subject line. And the subject line really needs to give people a reason why they should open the email. So very often, you know, we see emails going out with a subject line like, you know, September newsletter. I know it's September and I know it's a newsletter. It's not telling me why I should open it. And instead of having, you know, September newsletter, if it had uh, find out the three ways that you can lengthen the life of your wa washing machine, okay? Oh, and this is coming from the appliance place. So, oh, that's a very smart thing to do. Let me open it. I recognize the name of the appliance store. I I see this value because I want to lengthen the, the value of my washing machine. So I'm going to open the email. Um, but if a customer forwards it, is there an unsubscribe link? Yes, Marty. If someone unsubscribes it, the unsubscribe link will be there, um, but it will not unsubscribe the person it was forwarded to because that second person is not in the email list of the constant contact account. So the unsubscribe link is only for the first person who receives it whose email address is in that client's constant contact account. Good question, Marty. Uh, the other question uh, we often get is uh, the um, frequency. So generally speaking, uh, for most small businesses, once a month is a good cadence because it's frequent enough so that it is meaningful. You're basically knocking on people's doors once a month. But it's not too often where people start, start saying, hey, you know, you're a very nice person, but you're sending me too many emails. So I'm going to unsubscribe. There are exceptions to that. So if, for example, you are a yoga studio with a weekly schedule, then obviously you would send out an email once a week and people are expecting that. But for the vast majority of a monthly program makes sense. Um, sometimes people ask us about quarterly. I, I strongly don't suggest that because quarterly is it's four times a year, and if I miss one email, that means you don't you don't hear from them, you know, for six months. The monthly is is a go, good uh, cadence. Um, and asks how often will these emails go into a spam folder? Ah, so in the world of email service providers, um, deliverability into inbox is crucial, and the deliverability percentage of an email service provider like Constant Contact is very important. And it's kind of a, a, a hidden thing that people don't talk about. You want an email service provider that has a high deliverability and high sender reputation. That's an actual technical term. Constant Contacts is varies between 97 and 98%. That means of 100 emails that you send out, nearly all of them get delivered. Other email service providers have a weaker sender reputation and uh, deliverability rate and it, theirs may be lower, maybe 92. That means that eight out of your 100 emails are not being delivered. So all these things are part of the algorithm that determines Hotmail, Gmail, AOL, and so on, where that email ends up. Um, this is one of the primary reasons that we work with Constant Contact, simply because our clients' emails then get delivered um, correctly. Um, Someone asks, um, if you do this for us, is there a contract? Yes, uh, as a marketing agency, we have an agreement for our email service program. It's an annual agreement and you can pick uh, to do 
a certain number of emails. It can be four, six, 12, or 24. And uh, you can send them all in the first month, but usually it's, it's broken out over, uh, the vast majority have a monthly program. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more about it, uh, Stephanie will put a link to our email marketing page from the website in the chat. Uh, so you can look at that and um, happy then also to have a conversation with you to really explore how your business can um, prosper with a well-run email marketing program. We find that in many cases, people open up a constant contact account with all the right intentions to do email marketing and to do it right and so on. And by the second or third month, they say, yeah, it's kind of easy, but you know, I have, I have 300 other things to do. So um, why don't I have someone else do it for me? So I know it's done on time and it's done right and really starts working for my business. So Stephanie, thank you for that link. We have another two minutes. Happy to answer another couple of questions. What has been bothering you? What are you wondering about? What are your challenges about email marketing? Uh, what is keeping you up about email marketing? Okay. Uh, time. Yep, Long, you are right. So Sarah created a template in 30 minutes because she does this all day long and, and Sarah is really good at it. Um, like, like anything else in life, when you're an expert at it, you do it quickly, you do it well, and you can almost do it blindfolded. And that's part of the value why we contribute. I compare it to doing your taxes. You know, you can do your taxes yourself. It's going to take you a long time. And you'll always have in the back of your mind of this doubt whether you're doing it right or wrong. And that's the assurance that we give our clients that you know that it's done right. It meets email marketing best practices, and we're maximizing the use of all of the features available in the Constant Contact account. So I want to thank Farah very much for her outstanding presentation. Uh, and uh, we are going to wrap it up here. Tony, if you don't have an email list, you have to start working on building the list by collecting email addresses from friends and family and clients, customers, vendors, anybody who you connect with. Uh, thank you all for taking time today to join us uh, on this. I hope you found value with it. I hope we'll have an opportunity to communicate further down the line and uh, wish you all the best with your adventures in email marketing. Take care, everyone, and happy marketing. Bye.